What a coincidence that the very day that I didn't stream Dota for the first time in four and a half months is the day that we get a big update, a big patch for Dota 2. Of course, it's not a super big coincidence because we've had several patches so far. I think one several days into my Dota. I didn't even really look at it because I didn't really understand it. I believe that's when they changed the map, took away the small camps near the center of the map for the mid laners to take. Those are gone now. And then we had one patch update that I did look at, and now is 7.32D. Well, since I'm an expert at the game now, Archon 3, I should be able to fully grasp the significance of every single change that is happening in this patch now. So let's go through it and see what's going down. The flag bearer creep bonus gold for allies in range increased by 10. Oh, that's big. <laughs> you know, everything that's good also reminds me of how it could be bad. If I, as a carry player, miss the flag bearer creep and I see my crystal maiden standing there watching and waiting past jam and I miss it, we're gonna feel that even more. Uh, but that's pretty big. That's uh, apparently the flag bearer creep is a relatively new addition people tell me not even out for two years yet maybe a year half a year i don't know but it haven't always been there carry can't last hit gg yeah so uh okay let's uh let's make sure we hit it uh this is big nice extra gold so yeah we're not gonna go into a three minute monologue about every change because there's quite a few Fixed Grimstroke's Ink Swell heal with Aghanim Shard not applying during tick damage. Gyrocopter level 25 cooldown had less damage when there were more units in range. Keeper of the Lights Illuminate in spirit form didn't work correctly with cooldown reductions, it's fixed. The Commander Legion Commander's Moment of Courage level 25 also granting dual cast range. Lich having global cast range on Ice Spire if he's currently channeling Scepter's Sinister Gaze. <laughs> okay. How do people even discover that? Lane creeps would not move after an Ice Spire was destroyed. Lifestealer Scepter Infest could bypass Lincoln Sphere. The Sand King's Epicenter 15th Pulse had a radius of 825 instead of 850. Can you imagine? Yeah, I, I was not aware of most of these, but uh, all right. And then some tooltips. Okay, let's look at the balance changes. Blade mail. Active damage return is now 85% instead of 80. So the baseline is 20, and then 20 plus 80 was 100. Now it's going to be 105%, I believe. So blade mail, a little bit better. And the active damage return no longer interrupts channeling when cast. Hmm. 105% damage return. So they're buffing the blade mail. Buffing the blade mail. This is pretty big. You can now turn it on anytime when you're channeling. Nice. Bloodstone. Ah! The long awaited Leshrock nerf is here, guys. We're saved. Leshrock's 65% win rate at high level from mid is, is totally fine now. He has 50 less health and mana. And he's, of course, the biggest user of it. Uh, some people play Bloodstone on other heroes than Leshrac, but it's mostly Leshrac. I tried it out recently on uh, Slark. I meant to get... Uh, what's the uh, Orchid Malevolence upgrade? Bloodthorn. Uh, Bloodthorn, but I clicked the wrong one and I got Bloodstone. <laughs> it's not very good on Slark. It isn't. At least we tested it so that you don't have to. Now I definitely wouldn't get it on Slark. Boots of Bearing. Wow, 50 gold cheaper. Crimson Guard, two more armor. Drum of Endurance, recipe cost decreased from 550 to 500. 50 gold cheaper. Guardian Griefs, 100 gold cheaper. And the Guardian Aura threshold for boosted health regen increased from 20 to 25%. Okay, so if you're below a quarter health, you have more regen. Not bad, man, not bad. Big discount. So far, the biggest change. So far, they're not really very big changes. Pipe of Insight, 450. Huh. 
So it's the active when you press it for 50 magical damage. I mean, I don't think it really needed this. I feel like Pipe was already very good. At least it counters Leshrac a little. I mean, it counters a bajillion heroes. Seems like very safe changes so far, right? Uh, I think most of these are okay. This is a bit underwhelming. This is a little, it's a little underwhelming, right? This one was good with Leshrac, a little underwhelming. So I think like it's, most of these are fine. This is a tiny counter. Actually, no, this is a, yeah, this is a tiny counter to Wraith Pact. Uh, I mean, it's an amplification of magical damage that doesn't change. It's still minus 18%. It's still a cheap item that doesn't upgrade, but now you get one extra stat. It's one extra iron branch in it. I mean, I don't think you can even discuss the uh, significance of it too much. Wraith Pact obviously needed a nerf. What is it getting? Ward Aura no longer reduces magical or pure, but it does affect physical attacks and physical spell. Okay, so it's 30% damage reduction. It was on everything. Now it's only physical. That's a huge nerf. So it's a nerf to Wraith Pact, which means it's a nerf to Wraith Pact builders, like Tidehunter. And it's a nerf to Broodmother's Wraith Pact protection and Visage. Visage and Brood love to have Wraith Pact, Pipe, etc. in order to protect themselves. But it's also a buff to those that deal magical and pure damage and were being mitigated by Wraith Pact. So it's a buff to things like Death Prophet, Leshrac, um, uh, the Enchantress auto attack, of course, Impetus. But now Wraith Pact isn't. Now Wraith Pact is more of a targeted physical blocker. And they're pushing you towards Pipe more if you want to deal with magic. So more specific roles. But Wraith Pact now has some overlap with Crimson Guard and Assault Curus a little bit. It's like if you're tr if you're struggling with physical damage output, get Wraith Pact or Crimson or um, yeah or AC or Shivas. And they all work a little different. Wraith Pact reduces damage at the source. Crimson is against lots of mini attacks. Shivas also slows people's attack and slows them and gives a lot of intelligence. And then AC gives the bearer attack speed and works on buildings. Armor, and it gives armor and it removes armor. Yeah, okay. Well, it's a, it's a nerf to him that's good, but I hope Leshrac also gets nerfed more than just the Bloodstone. A little bit. Alchemist underperforming at all levels. Wow, much cheaper acid spray. Interesting. That's a that's a pretty big change. And the bounty rune multiplier increased. Oh. Nice. 1.5. So this is how much extra he gets from a gold bounty rune. So you still super one trusty shovel with Alchemist. And uh, you want to be the one that goes to the bounty room to pick it up for sure. Maybe we can try Alchemist again. Alchemist is back. Alchemist main again. <laughs> yep. Level 15 talent damage per Grievous Greed stack increased from 1 to 1.5. All right. Let me let me think about that. Uh, Alchemist Dota 2. I don't know if... Like, what are his... What are his talents? Uh, he either gets damage per Grieval Greed stack or Acid Spray grants armor to allies. Ah, 1.5. Hey, they updated it already. Nice. 1.5 damage per Grieval's Greed stack. How many Grieval's Greed stacks can he have? Stack duration 36. Uh, wait, there's no max. Gold bonus cap three. Base gold per stack. Oh, eight. He can only have eight stacks. The bonus cap is 24. It's three per stack. That means he has eight stacks, no? So instead of 24. 
It's 24 damage. Okay, so he was getting 24 damage at the max, and now he's getting 36. That's really bad. I'd still much rather give armor to allies. 32 bonus damage. Yeah. Nice try, buddies. He does have a lot of attack speed. But... It's a level 15, come on. I feel like it might be weak for a level 10. Arc Warden. Aghanim Scepter's secondary wraith duration has been decreased. Oh, this one is so toxic. It lasted 45 seconds too, the second wraith when it hit someone. Ah, uh, that's a good change. 15 only. Maybe now if we play Arc... Off topic. Have you tried Necro Radiance? I've seen it. Hell of a fun build. Should be really fun, yeah. I've seen it. Would be a fun hero to play. Uh, this is a good nerf. Maybe now I don't have to feel as guilty maining Arc and using our Arceus skills to win the game. Or actually, Arc doesn't really win. He just draws out games to over an hour. The first team that gets impatient loses. I like one hour games. I bet Zergs from StarCraft, Brood. Broodlord and swarm host players would love to play Arc Warden. One hour plus games. Techies V2, yeah. Less than three. Hey, Necronicon. Thank you, dude. And Van Leonis, thank you, too. Level 10 talent health decreased from 225 to 200. Okay. Let's see. Arc Warden. Hey, it worked with an underscore. Hmm. Where are his talents? So it's either the health or the flux cast range. Ah, I think I usually took the range, but I wouldn't be surprised if health actually performs better, win rate wise. Gets a little worse. Talent Tempest double cooldown reduction. Decrease from 50 to 40%. Okay. I always got the duration, I think. No, no, no. That's not true, I did get the cooldown reduction. Okay, that's a good nerf. That's a good nerf, I think. You had basically no cooldown with Arcturine Core and that. Yeah, it, I think it's still broken. Axe. Level 10 talent movement speed per active battle hunger increased from 10 to 12%. Uh, or Berserker Call Armor. I think my guides always recommended me to take this. So I got buffed. But maybe Call is better? I don't know. The fact that they're buffing it shows that their stats say this one is better. Oh yeah, I can click on the hero too, right? Yeah, okay. Bounty Hunter. Shadow Walk now reduces attack speed on hit. Dude, Bounty Hunter buff? Come on. So he hits you and your counter attack, your repartee is slow. Toxic hero, Bounty Hunt. I think Bounty Hunter was pretty good already. He's a real snowball hero. I even think he doesn't play terribly from behind because he gives vision to enemies so you can make better decisions. But he dominates from ahead, and he doesn't play terribly from behind. Yeah, bounty hunter, more like booty hunter, am I right, the funk? Bristleback, base health regen. Oh my god, this changes everything. 0.75 HP per second. So, Bristleback, I guess he is pretty strong late game in their mind, but he has a weak early game. I don't know. Didn't feel like he really needs that. I get... Yeah, actually, yeah, he does need it. Bristleback doesn't get played. We checked it. Nobody over 7k plays uh, Bristleback. Bristle's back. Yeah, he's, he's still not good. I mean, small buffs to heroes that aren't that good is fine. Yeah, he's one of the lowest win rate heroes. I saw that. I think he's like 38% at high level. I like big bounty hunters. I, I cannot like lie. Big bounty hunters and I cannot lie. Oh, your name, Hunter Seeker. Bounty Hunter Seeker. Thanks for the reset. Welcome back, man. No one plays Bristle due to Silencer. Just get BKB. 
Spawn spiderlings. Spiderling vision radius. Oh, that's that's good. Brood mother is like 60 plus percent. Like I think Brood, Leshrac, and Marcy are like three of the strongest heroes in the pro play. And in general, it's good that they get less vision. And that uh, Aghanim snare that got discovered. It's funny because when I ate his eat brood mother like four months ago, people were saying that Aghanim's is bad. And then at TI, it just dominated. People just hated running into a four second root that was invisible. So good nerfs on brood. She's probably still very good and dominant. Chaos Knight, more critical minimum. Level 20 talent, min max chaos, bold duration. Increase from 0.5 to 0.75 seconds. Okay. Chaos Knight buff is always nice. He's fun. Crystal Maiden. Allied mana regen outside of proximity radius decreased. Oh, so if you're near... I forgot this part. If you're near, it's lots of mana. And if you're f global, it's a bit of mana. So the bit of mana goes down. Well, that's nice. That's nice. I think that's good. She she's quite high win rate. And it's, it's like effortless, right? Anyone could play this. Like literally, an amiibo could play this. If you just put a Crystal Maiden in the game, level one, stay in core, get level one aura, you're already helping. I said good day, sir, Xidir. Bramble Maze, damage per tick increased from 50 to five more per subsequent level. Wow. Dark Willow, she's fun. I wish I was good at her like that, but it's gonna take some effort. She's a, she's a lot of fun. But like with Void Spirit, aiming the Bramble and with Void aiming the, the circle displacement requires a bit of knowledge about where they're gonna spawn. Cause you don't get a blueprint when you think about casting it with Void at least. Yeah, she's a fun hero. Maybe we should play her more, yeah. I'm gonna like have some learning moments on on stream soon it's not gonna be like one day i'm learning everything but every now and then i'm gonna learn a hero and add it when i feel like playing something new she might be one of them uh dazzle poison touch duration increased from four to seven seconds baseline five to eight so one extra in each level this is the duration if you don't extend it. Because essentially you can extend it infinitely, right? If you hit someone, the slow and the damage keeps getting extended. So this one is mostly relevant for can you still hit the window extension time? You now have one second more grace period if you can get an auto attack in. And what if you just cast it like in the late game and then walk away and don't do auto attacks? So for that, it's better. I thought Dazzle was quite good. So this is a buff. But then you look at this, that's a pretty big nerf. 15, 10, 5, and 0 mana nerf. So his early game gets weakened. And it's true that at level 1 and 3, uh, Poison Touch is super dominant in lane. So it's an early game nerf, late game buff. Is it a bigger nerf or a bigger buff? I feel like it's a bigger buff. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of true, Poison Touch. It's very good early and then falls off. Because at some point, when enemies start getting their ults, it's not safe to Poison Touch someone anymore and keep auto attacking them. Like, you're fine until level four, basically. But I often regret maxing Poison Touch. I'm level one, I'm the boss. I'm level three, Poison Touch level two, let's go. I'm level 4.8, it's almost 10 minutes, I need an XP tome if I haven't got any kills, and the enemy mid is already level 6, 7, yeah. Yeah, they're going to get got on, for sure. I think uh, this is a buff, I mean this whole thing is a buff. Well, you just get one more second, it's a buff Oxygenio, you get one more second without trying. Crypt Swarm, 10, 10, 10, 10 more damage per level, okay. They want Death Prophet to be a valid alternative to Le Shrek. Magic Resistance plus 2%. The, 
Disruptor, Glimpse. 15 mana more at level 1. That's funny, because I feel like level 1 Glimpse is almost useless. But I suppose it isn't if you're very uh, skilled. 15, 10, 5. Ah, 15, 15, 15, 15 mana more everywhere. It's just 15 mana more. Okay, okay, okay. That makes sense. If they want to nerf it. Yeah, it is a very strong ability. If you are reaching 25 Disruptor, and I sadly played against a 25 Disruptor recently, that is an enormous field of Static Storm. Really big. Uh, fair nerf, I think. Doom, Scorched Earth. Damage per second increased by 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay. Doom is a little bit on the low win rate. I saw he's like 48%, uh, I believe, at high level. Small little Doom buff. Dragon Knight. Two base damage increase, cooldown decreased for Elder Dragon form to 105 always. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. It's pretty timid changes, right, Chat? Nothing too big. I think the biggest one so far is Wraith Pact. Drow Ranger, Gust. Cooldown increased by 3 seconds, 2, 1, and none. So, weakening her early game Gust cooldown. So she's a little more at risk. I think that's fair. The Drow is strong. And pretty safe if you play her well. Oops. I click it. Earth Spirit. Uh, he's underperforming at every level except immortal and even there he's a little below 50 but the lower you go the worse he is and it's easy to see why he can hard commit without hitting his mark and he's kind of tough to play he's a true five head heroes only for high iq 90 iq and above and i think he's like 40 percent and then slowly scales up to 48 percent when you get higher yeah he's a high skill hero for sure Level 10 talent magnetized duration increased from 2 to 3 seconds. Charge restore time. This is a pretty big buff. This changes everything he does for the positive. I liked Earth Spirit a lot when I was playing him. But I also remember watching my A to Z game back and I was missing a lot as well. <laughs> with the rolling. Enigma, Demonic Conversion, Eidolon range goes down until you max it. Interesting. Ah, uh, that's good. He has very strong early game, very oppressive laning. Grim Stroke, Ink Swell movement speed bonus increased by 2%. 2%, 2%, 2%. Nice. We're doing well on Grim Stroke. I think we have 8 4 win rate on Grim Stroke. Uh, getting a buff there? I'm happy to play him more. He's one of the most artistic, artistically beautiful heroes. I like his voice acting, I like his animations, and I like his play style. Still needs so much more practice with him to be competent, but he's fun. Dark, this is big. His agonims can be used on uh, BKB and spell mutes. This is really big. Now, agonims with Grimstroke is not like with disruptor where you always rush it where it's part of your build i'm not saying grim uh, i'm not saying disruptor always rush it but you can always rush it it can be a valid play style uh, because it's so strong but with grim it's more like this is best when you're behind because it means you make a stronger copy of an opponent and it's best against certain heroes that are high agility baseline agility users right that's quite nice I get this situationally. If I see some carry on enemy is popping off, it's a late game item. You don't get it first. Maybe first you get Aetherlands. Uh, yeah, Aetherlands, maybe Aeon Disc or Glimmer or Four Staff, Yules, you know, any of those. And then you start thinking about Aghanims, but maybe Shard first even. It's like a 40 plus minute item, 40, 50 minute. Talent, Soulbind, Spell Damage, Increase. This is his ult, right? 
ultimate targets receive 20% bonus spell damage, not 25. So this is a pretty, pretty nice buff. Gyrocopter. Flak cannon attacks increase from plus 2 to plus 3. Okay. This is mostly a position 1 gyro buff, not really 4 or 5. Which I'm still not sure how much I like it. Though I have seen some gy I have lost to Gyro 1 for sure. It can be quite good. But when I see the pros do it, I usually didn't like it much. Like I didn't have much faith in it. And they mostly activate it against uh, Enigma Lane. But, but yeah, he, he is kind of coming back to Gyro 1. I have lost to Gyro once, but they're on my team. <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, I'm sorry that happened to you. Turn rate increase for Kundalini. Base damage increased by two. Okay. That's a hero I really like. I like his playstyle a lot. He's going to move up on my list of heroes to play. Kunka is also moving up on my list of heroes to play. From lowest to maybe not lowest anymore. Look at the width of that ghost shape. Ghost ship. It won't have to be a fail boat anymore. Run bonus speed increased. Legion commander. Moment of courage proc chance from 10 to 12%. Extra. Okay, Leshrak better get some nerfs to compensate for the Wraith Pact letting his magic damage go through. Aghanim shard radius bonus decreased. 15 less. Pulse Nova now has a cooldown after it's toggled off. Damage decreased by 10. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, that's four really solid nerfs. Yeah, the shard is the one that makes his stun repeat. He still has a level 10 talent that makes it bigger. And together with Split Earth uh, Shard, uh, it was huge. It was uh, part of the reason why there was such a long drawn out game at TI. Like 70 minutes or something? Was it the Liquid game? Leshrak's so good defense. The Pulse Nova one is actually something that is reminiscent of Hot's Phoenix attack toggle. It's where you constantly on and off it, which is especially affordable during Bloodstone's activation period of six seconds. And it meant that you got more pulses than what you normally would get. On off, on off, you could like override the usual cadence of uh, the pulses so you did more damage maybe 50 percent more and even though it costs more mana bloodstone mitigated its loss so now you won't be able to do that anymore which is a relief for uh less rock damage burst abuse with pulse nova it's also a relief for people that don't want to do that because they think it's tedious and it's a relief for those that weren't doing it because they couldn't do it skill wise or uh, didn't do it because they weren't aware of it. So it's gone. Pros should not like this being turned off because it's skill expression. But at the same time, pros are aware that Leshrak is very powerful. One of the best mid laners, one of the best heroes in the game. So I think pros will celebrate this nerf as well. And then there's just the general Pulse Nova damage nerf. And then this one gave him a lot of flow. The mana regen even though you could go and say well mana is always fixable but the level 10 split earth talent that always gives you a bigger stun so if i can just solve my mana issues with clarity or whatever or bottle then uh better just to have actual value bigger value in a team fight but dota 2 is not a game where the action is completely isolated to how well you do in a team fight it's very much about how good your general flow is your timings how often do you need to top up? Do you have enough mana to do everything? How greedily can you farm? And this is a really big mana regen buff. Coming up online really early, so I think it's a good targeted nerf. I have seen people pick this uh, a decent amount, actually. Like, top top Leshrak players. I've watched a couple of replays Leshrak. And I don't know if they're practicing it. Obviously, I'm not privy to pro versus pro scrim games. And I don't remember TI which one they took. But since he is essentially a mana hero, this is, uh, this is very popular. You cannot argue against this. 
So good nerfs for Leshrac. Will he still be good? I think yes. But how much weaker did he get? His win rate, if it's 60 to 65 now, I imagine him to drop to 55 to 60. I think he will drop 5% or so, maybe. I don't think he will go to 50% or below. Be also because Wraith back got nerfed. Lion, Earth Spike, damage increased by 15, 10, 5, and nothing. So better early game. I feel like his late game suffers more than his early game. Talent, hex cooldown reduction. Let me know if you need a POS 5 for Clink's carry. I love me some Dazzle. Thanks for the content. Yo, that would be fun, man. I pretty much just play solo queue, but appreciate the offer, Zyla. Thanks for the prime. Talent hex cooldown reduction increase from 2 to 3 seconds. Okay. Uh, and the alternative? Where do I see his talents? Wait, do they not show his talents on this page? Yeah. I don't think they do. Old page. Lion wiki Dota 2. Wait, besides his Q? Uh, finger of death damage per kill or three second hex cooldown. Okay, I think the hex is better. If you've been stacking a lot, you might take the ult, but the hex should be better. So nice, nice buff. Marcy. Cast and jump range. Oh, wow. Wow. That... That and Wraith Pact are the biggest nerfs so far. Almost half. A percentage. Almost same. Jump speed decreased. Lifesteal decreased for sidekick by 5% per level. Good. Good. So now if you can, in the distance, see the enemy tower and Marcy is out of vision, she cannot stun you from... Yeah, this is night vision. She could basically jump on you just as you gain night vision. Just as you gain night vision, as m the moment you perceive her, that's when she would jump on you. Wait, no, it's less. It's 800. Oh. Uh, no, it was from outside of night vision, isn't it? Now she can almost night vision surprise you. Yeah, 800 plus 800. So she could jump on you from almost out of day vision. 1800. 1600. So n now she can night vision surprise. Uh, night vision surprise you with this. 1600 total if in a straight line. Yeah. Okay. That, that's a really... You know what? I think she's still good as a core. But this heavily nerfs her support ability and it is still a huge nerf even as a core obviously but i think marcy four and five is going to be a lot harder a lot a lot harder mars speed penalty when active for bulwark <laughs> two percent less talent bulwark frontside damage reduction increase from 10 5 to 12 6 percent okay tiny stuff tiny tiny buffs and he's a little underperforming in win rates but he's good if you know what you're doing medusa probably a little weak now cost range for mystic snake up by 50 projectile speed now increases by 15 percent with each bounce oh wow there is a small situation where this could be weak if you want the snake to linger to create a longer period of zoning 
where people don't want to go somewhere. Overall, it's probably a buff because it means it comes back to you quicker, you get your mana quicker, um, and people get hit quicker. All of that is good. But there's a small, tiny period where this is worse. A small situation, very, very situational and unimportant. But it's mostly a buff, and this is a buff too. A nice little buff for her. Is the snake a projectile? Um, yes, I believe it's an unmissable projectile. So like a homing missile. Monkey King, armor bonus increased from 12, 18, 24 to 14, 19, 24. This is his ult, right? Wukong command. More armor, cast point quicker. Wow, I thought Monkey King was quite good. And he got ner uh, he got buffed twice, tiny buffs. Watching my favorite streamer do a patch review for my favorite game makes me very happy. I mean, it's a ring of protection plus two, ring of protection plus one, and then 16% faster uh, cast point. This is big. His win rate is in all levels is actually bottom 10. Really? He also got baseline plus one armor, not documented. Huh. Yeah, this is the big one, really. His ult was so easy to dodge. Yeah, he, it needed setup from someone else. Yo, low skill noob. Thanks for the 30 months. Uh, yeah. Cool, man. Morphling, waveform. Cooldown increased by one second on each level. Morph Aghanim Scepter no longer reduces cooldown for Morph. Okay. How much was it, the cooldown reduction for Aghanims? Cast point, turn rate, base attack speed. Ice Frog usually doesn't change these things. Oh, uh, you think Ice Frog is not on the game anymore or this isn't his patch? Yeah, Yen. He had like er permanent uptime for it before. Huh. Morph late just lost a lot of power. Yeah, Aghanims was crazy. I can still hear Gorp mauling about this one. Level 25 talent changed from two waveform charges to minus 40% waveform cooldown. Oh, I see. Pretty big nerf too. That's good that he got nerfed, right? Naga Siren. Strength gain decreased by 0.2. Base armor decreased. Yeah, she's got really high win rate. At pro play and uh, at TI. Which is also pro, you could say. She'll be a bit more killable. Nature's Prophet, another hero I like and I would like to add to my roster. Cooldown decreased. Don't you guys think Nature's Prophet face is weird? What is that? Amazing progress, Grubby. Yo, thanks, Jellybone Panda. Rat face. <laughs> Looks like a toad. Uh, cooldown decreased for teleportation by three seconds, two seconds, one second, no seconds. That's his basic ability that allows him to zoom around the map. Curse of the old growth. That's the loudest sound effect in the game, right? The one that literally gives me a jump scare every time. <laughs> Freaking so loud. Duration increased from 6 to 7 seconds. Wait, duration? No, no, it's another one. Wait. Oh. Huh? Wait, it's a shard or scepter or what? Shard. Ah. Oh, this is the vision. No, I was thinking of Wrath of Nature. That's the loud one. This is uh, the shard. The more trees someone is around, the more vision and slow or something. Old shard video, yeah. Damage over time. Yeah, the slowest baseline. And then there's DPS per tree. Okay. Necrophos, Ghost Shroud, increased magic damage decreased. <laughs> Wait, what? Inc 
Increased magic damage. Uh, oh, wow. Wow. Big nerf. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Big buff. He ghost shrouds himself, right? He takes 40% bonus damage from magic, even as you can't hit him physically. Now he takes only 25% bonus magic damage. Huge buff, actually. People started playing Necro and high tier pups now. Yeah, I saw some on stream today. Damn. Yo, thanks, Battlecrab. Happy patch review day, Grubster. Nyx Assassin. Spiked Carapace. Stun duration decreased. From 0.6 to 0.5. Wow. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 stun decrease. So Nyx is quite strong they think yeah it was quite spicy pretty big nerf pretty big nerf nix nerf zai nerf yeah zai was owning on nix ogre mage base health regen up oh ogre the hero that can be played in every position without trolling except probably position one right I think you can play him two, three, four, five. But it's half half HP regen. Yeah, it's you can play it as one, right? But will you still have ten K behavior score? Pangalier, talent shield crash cooldown in ball increase from two and a half to three seconds. Okay, a buff to a 15 talent. Did he even take this? No. People always go Rolling Thunder duration. So it doesn't matter. Oh, it's a nerf? Wait. Talent Shield Crash Cooldown in Ball. Talent Shield Crash Cooldown in Ball increased. Oh. He could do this every two and a half. Every three and now every two and a half. And before every two and a half, now every three. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's the W spam in ball. Wait, is it the one that does like uh, this? This one? Right? Oh, that's if you have the eggs. Oh, is this the one where he uh, flies a bit? Like the bounce during the roll? <laughs> Okay, all right, cool. Uh, Phantom Assassin, base health regen increased by 0.25. Dude, PA, I don't want to say she's a pup stomper, but she's so strong late game and people don't counter her well enough or don't know how to or whatever, that pretty much she wins late game in my games, in my pups. In Archon and before. Pretty much the one that has PA, unless it's like literally a chimpanzee, that team ends up winning unless the game is over before 40 minutes. She is a pup stomper, yeah. I think so. Natural crit and evasion are huge in low rank, yeah. Pup elo doesn't gank farming PA. Yeah, true. That's true, sadly. If my team would just come with me, but then I don't think I come with my team either. <laughs> Mana cost decreased for Phantom Strike. Okay. All right. Primal Beast. Damage decreased for Onslaught. Wait, I, which one is Onslaught? Ah, that one. <laughs> and then a massive charge. Damage down by 15, 10, 5, none. Run is now cancelled if Primal Beast is stunned during it. Dude, that's huge! That's actually really big. So you couldn't stop him. Yeah, it doesn't say he's unstoppable during it, right? So, 
essentially it is almost like a bug fix yeah yeah he can't stop himself if he hits stop Puck, dream coil initial damage increased by 25 30 and 45 hmm Patch, health regen decreased. Patch nerf, flesh heap, cooldown increased. By nothing, one second, two seconds, three seconds. All right, patch nerfs. Let's see if he gets picked less now. Pakna, nether blast, cast range increased. <laughs> no chance, no, you won't. <laughs> Queen of Pain, Shadow Strike. Can now be ground targeted with Aghanim Scepter? Okay, hold up. Hurls of Poison Dagger. Aghanim's. Calls a Shadow Strike to become an AoE spell and have increased initial damage. When Shadow Strike ends or is reapplied to an enemy hero, the target emits a scream of pain, hitting any nearby enemies. And now it can be ground targeted. So you can scout fog and the radius with the scepters increased. Sonic Wave, I definitely feel like she could use some buffs. So that's pretty good. Cooldown decreased from 125. Wow. This makes her a lot better mid. She can do rotations more frequently. I feel like anything under two minutes hits a really sweet spot for when you consider that two minutes is kind of a integral clock time of Dota. Every 60 seconds, a minute passes in Africa. And every two minutes in Dota, a bounty rune spawns like a, a power rune so now she can hit those timings and uh, hit ults with it Le level 20 talent sonic wave cooldown reduction decreased from 60 to 40 seconds the cooldown reduction decreased so this is a nerf that means before it was 125 minus 60 for 65 now it's 90 minus 40 for 50 and it's 100 minus 40 for 60 65 60 so basically you're not getting level 20 before you get this <laughs> you never have to consider 110 minus 40 so they just had to adjust this and it's still a buff to what it was before but this talent is relatively less impactful which also means that it's a slight prioritization potentially towards the other, which is Scream of Pain damage. Ah, okay. Yeah, I think both are good. Razor. I like Razor, but I have been wondering if I play him wrong. So I only play him on position three and I tend to farm a lot. People have been saying I should play him more aggressively. And I've been watching some videos about different roles and three is supposed to lead the charge to distract the enemy and bring supports for ganks together with two sometimes. And uh, that means if I'm constantly on the other side of the map, I think that can still work if I have boots of travel, but power threads is good on him. But I think the way that I play, it's maybe most suitable for, for position one. And later in a couple of hours, I'm going to pick my role for the time being. And really stick to it and grind it so we'll decide together what role is most suitable for me but the way that i've been playing razor 3 maybe it was too passive agonim shard damage increased for storm surge agonim shard damage the shard isn't that when people attack him he does a lightning strike back I don't know why it has this picture, which is his movement speed, which is kind of unrelated. Cause a storm surge to have a chance when attacked. What? It's a passive movement speed increase. 
and always when targeted with okay so they just attribute it to his passive so that they don't have to create a new button since it's still a passive oh that makes sense because both are passive passive to release fork lightning that strikes people and slows them and deals damage yeah yeah shard is is okay for him i usually don't buy it but it's okay the damage up by 25. talent agility increase from 9 to 12. the level 10 isn't that where i take movement speed oh no it's plasma field damage 12 agility instead of 9. I'm actually impressed that the Dota website has the update already of 12 agility here. Aren't you, aren't you guys impressed? I don't think the Warcraft 3 Blizzard page has all the updates. The classic Bnet page. I wonder if they had to go in there like a person that works on the website, gets the info and then updates it or if this is automatically seeded out of a programming field input like an api if it is linked to backend that's really nicely set up though it could also lead to weird bugs where it says i don't know percentage percentage underscore field not found or something Of course, it's an API, yeah, but it also leads to bugs. Hello, Grubby. That does happen. Have a good day ahead. <laughs> Yo, XDDing. Have a good day, man. Rubik, base damage increased by three. This is a nerf to idiots that go in to get auto attacks when they should just damn well keep their distance. But overall, it's a buff, right? Buff to laning phase in particular, early laning. Sand King, base damage increased from 2333 to 2533. Okay, one extra physical damage. Caustic Finale, debuff duration increased from 5 to 6. Oh, that's toxic. I think Sand King's really good against double melee lanes. And now he has more of a period. This is big. No, this is not a useless, useless buff. This one doesn't really matter, but this one is big in my opinion. Not toxic, caustic. Oh yeah, sorry. Disseminate. Radius increased. Uh, disseminate. Six second duration. Cast range, shared damage. Okay. Radius increased. Okay, that's pretty solid for a less popular hero. Yes, Spectre RLX skill. Uh, well, it's kind of like Shadow Word Pain from warlock except different talent requiem fear per line decreased from point plus four second to plus point four seconds plus point three seconds uh level 20 talent requiem fear per line decreased i don't get it this is a nerf right <laughs> Is it a big nerf? Oh wait, this is the one that makes me run away for a very long time, right? How many souls can he have per line? How many lines can he have? I remember running away for like five seconds sometimes. What's 20, 20 times? But he wasn't making people run for like seven, eight seconds, no? 20 souls, 10 lines uh, per line. Oh, so he could add like four seconds before or what? And now it's three seconds. Something like that. If he does it right under you, like under Yules, you get hit by 20 souls, 10 lines. Oh, depends how many lines hit you. Yeah, okay. All right, Shadow Shaman, Ether Shock, Mana Cast decreased by nothing, 5, 10, 15. Talent Shackles, Talent, level 10 Talent, Shackles total damage bonus increase, okay. Shadow Shaman is a real pop killer. He split pushes and he kills barracks. <laughs> he blinks on top of me, I, I, I'm the 5, 
Uh, I'm the one, he's the five. He blinks on top of me, kills me. I despair. He gets higher level than me. Yeah, he's been, he really kicks my ass sometimes. Uh, what's that maniac's name? Sir Action Slack said he wants to coach me on Shadow Shaman again. <laughs> Uh, silencer arcane curse radius decreased from 425 to 340 360 380 400 level 10 talent radius decreased oh that's good silence is quite strong now uh level 10 talent scatter blast damage increased from 60 to 70 cool she's another hero i want to pick up sometime but she is quite strong already so it doesn't seem like a targeted but maybe we can like a targeted positive like a good moment to buffer but um i don't know how much this gets picked i don't have the data whether this is the best level 10. it may not matter at all for all we know or maybe it's the best already sniper mana cost increased ho, ho, ah, ah. radius decreased wow big sniper nerfs That's good. I think that's fair. Yeah, it's a 75 mana nerf on a full rotation. And the radius, this is this is huge. I wonder how this affects the middle matchup. How much more room do you have to squeeze past the bridge, the river? How many more milliseconds do you spend running through uh, shrapnel when you go from the when you go for like the water rune and stuff storm spirit base mana regen increased hmm. okay. Sven yeah fair nerf I am 9-1 with Sven in Archon and Crusader playing support Sven every game every single game I played him chat is like you didn't do anything you just got carried nine times in a row and the tenth game that i lost chat was like see see it sucks don't play sports fan it's so savage and misdirected see i told you it's bad i knew it and then you win nine times they're like fake Fake news. You got carried. Or or they were they would be like uh oh enemy only has magic damage. You're screwed. Your armor won't be any good. Turns out it was good anyway. You got carried as support, wow, yeah. And they got supported! The carries. Then you play carry, people are like, ah, oh, you just got supported. All you did is play the game and play it well. But it is true, he's kind of like easy mode. You turn on armor and you stun and then uh, you watch. But I enjoyed it. I like simple things. That's why I like chat sometimes. Techies, sticky bomb, cast point improved from 0.2 to 0.1 second. Mm. Templar assassin. Psionic trap, time to full charge decreased. Uh, bring back all techies. Yeah, techies buffs. Yikers. I think that's I think that's a big deal. Faster sticky bomb. Terror blade. Reflection. Cooldown decreased. Oh man, this was so irritating. I played against Terror Blade recently. He was harassing me in lane as support. He would make an illusion and I kept running from it. But I forgot that you can kill them. You can just hit them and kill them. Yeah. Cooldown decreased. Timbersaw. Flamethrower. Duration increased from 7 to 8 seconds. <laughs> okay. That's his shard, I believe. Talent. Whirling death attribute reduction increased from 10 to 12%. Timbersaw buffs. ATF is going to be happy. Tiny. Avalanche. Radius decreased by nothing. 10. 
20, 30. He plays carry now. Oh, he's back to position one. Oh, I see, I see. Tree volley. Cooldown increased from 15 to 17. Yeah, this one was strong. His agonims. Just get Daedalus and uh, Desolator and throw trees. Supports get one shot. Tree and Protector. Leech Seed. Oh, I hope this gets more toxic. This is, for those of you that know Hots and Mule, this is Mule. This hero has Mule, the only hero that has it. Basically like Abathur. Vision everywhere as well. Yeah, it's really toxic. Damage heal per second increased for Leech Seed. Okay, damage and heal per second. So this works on buildings as well. You can heal buildings. Uh, cast point improved and cast range. Wait, wait, wait. Leech Seed? Is this the one that works on buildings? Ah, no, 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 this one, this one. Leech Seed is a life sapping seed in an enemy unit. Oh yeah, implanting your seed in someone and then draining their health while simultaneously slowing it. The seed heals friendly. Oh, okay. So the radius goes from 400 to nothing extra, 50 extra, 100 extra, 150 extra. Okay, yeah. Overgrowth damage per second increased from 75 to 85. Okay. A little, little tree and protector buffs. That's quite nice. We can play him a little bit more. Troll Warlord. Two bonus base agility. Dude. Dude. When they nerfed Blade Master in 20... 19 in warcraft 3 or maybe it was earlier 2018 anyway they nerfed him by two agility and that was huge from 24 to 22 and he never fully recovered sad that's why undead got so strong against orc because our blade master got nerfed this is a two agility buff that's enormous i think troll warlord's gonna be so broken he must be the strongest carry now no, but legit, I think this is kind of a sneaky, uh, sneaking in sleeper buff that won't be noticed immediately. And then it's going to be like, oh my God, it's insane. Why is it so influential? Because agility is the bread and butter for carries. Though I will say that the highest agility you get in Warcraft is like 50 or 60. And Drow can easily get like 300 here. <laughs> so it's significant at level 1, 2, 3 for sure. A 10% buff almost, but that does not hold up once you get a bajillion items. His ult sucks though. Yeah, a random ult. Yeah. yeah. Level 20, 20 talent battle trance movement speed increased. I saw a Slark with over 400 agility. Yeah, me too. In my game, I had a Slark with over 400 agi. Base agility was also increased for Slark in last patch. Look at him now. Look at him now! Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think this will be big. This could easily give him like 3-4% extra win rate. That may seem extreme. Maybe it's more like a half or two. But it could be like 3% win rate extra. Undying. Soul rip damage and heal talent decreased from plus 12 to plus 10. Tombstone zombie damage decreased. Okay level 15 talent nerfs i guess they found that he has a big power spike at level 15 or something viper nether toxin viper is a little low win rate even though many people said he's a toxic hero like when i started a to z viper people were like ah viper is so annoying to lane against and blah blah but his win rate is actually not fantastic mana cast decreased for nether toxin and nosedive cost range increased by 75 from 300 to 375. Level 10 talent corrosive skin DPS from 13 to 18. And the corrosive skin magic resistance at the level 15 talent from 12 to 15. Yeah, Viper and our, uh, buffs. I still always ban Viper. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think you should. I think you should have been banning Drow, Sniper... PA, <laughs> uh, some of those, Leshrac, Marcy, Primal, maybe, Witch Doctor, Naga, Arc Warden, <laughs> Silencer, yeah, those would have been better. Viper is a bad ban, win rate wise. 
but uh, maybe now he's pickable more. I like him. I could play him more. Visage, Gravekeeper's Cloak. Aghanim short cooldown increased from 60 to 65 seconds. Aghanim's short cooldown. Wait, this is the one where he becomes a block of ice on the floor? Yeah. Cooldown increase 66. Oh, okay. All right. Warlock. Upheaval. Max damage per second increased. Okay, Warlock buffs. Warlock is like my second highest win rate hero. I'm like 10 1, 10 2, or something. Though I don't think it holds up much. Like, it was great in Guardian Crusader. I don't think it's going to be, like, great in Legend. But, I mean, anything works. Like, if you work at it and you specialize in them, anything can work in Dota. Golem armor increased from 6, 9, 12 to 8, 12, 14. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Dubu plays a lot of Warlock and he's, like, 12k. Does he? Well, we can bring him back. I'm bringing Warlock back. Yeah. Wind Ranger. Base damage increased by two. Wow. Now you should definitely pick her in game three of TI. Base damage increased by two. Or game five. Base mana regen increased by a quarter. Level 10 talent. Wind run radius increased from 200 to 225. Wow. She seems like a good hero. <laughs> Slack's crying in the corner. Wraith King. Projectile speed increased by 200 for Wraith Fire Blast. Skeletons now, Vampiric Spirit, now gain 25 additional movement and attack speed when targeting an enemy affected by Wraith Fire Blast. Okay. Not bad. And that's it. Wraith King has the final word. Seems pretty good buffs. Yeah, small little nice buffs. A little bit more finesse. When you stun someone, it happens quicker and your skeletons get there quicker. So he's a little bit... They're buffing his team fight component. It doesn't really affect... It does not affect his farming at all, which is what he's doing 99% of the game. But he's a little bit more relevant in a fight. Maybe if this buff... Oh, that's why Gorp was playing Wraith King earlier today. But he got baited into a fight. When he just needed 200 gold for Radiance. Oh, he was so annoyed. I really feel for him. It's the biggest tilt roll, position one. All right. I'm, I'm going to stay away from Wraith King. I don't... I don't... Uh, I did not have a great time playing him in A to Z. <laughs> Maybe someday. Waga said Wraith King might be one of the biggest carries this patch with these buffs. Hmm... Well, Waga said it. That's that's a, definitely a valid opinion. It would not be uh, it would not be my guess. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Nice.